Archimedes steam cannon. Yep. The myth is that Archimedes created a steam cannon around 214 BC to protect the city of Syracuse from a siege. We've got a one-page drawing and some backwards Italian scribbles from Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, no attribution there about where he got it. He just mentions Archimedes as the originator. Then we've got some plans from Greek inventor Sacchus. Well, the Sackis design is just basically a barrel that you heat the back end of. It looks like it's got some valving on top and a gravity feed for water. Well, I have to say, looking at these two plans, let's start with the Sackis first, especially since he built it in a pretty reasonable scale. Okay. It's this piping that will become the steam tank of the tank. When you heat a kettle, the water inside slowly turns into steam. But if you massively crank up the heat, water can flash to steam in an instant. This causes a huge increase in pressure, and hey presto, there's a projectile. What we have here is a miniature replica of Archimedes steam cannon. We'll put some water in through this funnel here, uh, retain it in this chamber, heat this whole thing up to where it's as hot as we can get it, open this valve, let the, the water go down in here. A bunch of steam is created instantly. It pressurizes this whole thing and fires this tennis ball out the end. I'm gonna put the ball in first, then I'm gonna clear out, you're gonna put the water in, and yeah. you'll clear out and we'll launch it. As well as the new additions to the cannon, they're maximizing their chance of a steam flash by heating the copper with a blowtorch. We're at about 500 degrees there. Oh, dude, let's go. Three, two, one. Firing. <laughs> well, <laughs> it fired. It did. It did. It fired. It wasn't very deadly, but it definitely fired. Jamie, that was the cutest little cannon I have ever seen. We've got a proof of concept. I want to move on. Yeah, I'm tired of these little things. Well, Adam, I think it's time we go full scale with this one. Look, I think if we build this, we should do something a little different with this myth and not limit ourselves to period materials here. We should go with modern materials and go with the best technology we can apply to illustrating the principle of Leonardo's design. And if we can't do it with everything that we have, there's no way Leonardo could have done it, and there's no way in hell Archimedes could have used this. I agree. So if it works, it's going to be really dramatic. Was that the coolest sound ever? That looks pretty good. Last up, they put a sock on the end of the barrel to help them locate the fired ball, because Da Vinci reckoned this thing could fire over 3,000 feet. Uh, the vibe right now is that this thing is going to work. We're all a little giddy. I give a 20% chance that absolutely nothing will happen when we push the launch button. I give a 70% chance of success, that is, the ball leaving the end of this barrel. And I'm only going to give a 10% chance that we actually find that ball. But launch will only take place when the cannon is so hot that all the water injected in through the actuators will flash to steam in an instant. And 1,000 degrees should be hot enough. Okay, let's get out of here. I think it's time. Give a countdown. Three, two, one. <laughs> the water definitely got injected. So what went wrong? Well, on closer inspection, there's your problem. Adam. What do you see? It's steam. Look at the water dripping off. The inside of the barrel simply wasn't hot enough to get that instantaneous flash. Well, we've got it now at like 1,500 degrees. That's what the thermocouple is reading. So I think we just want to stoke this fire. Stoke it, stoke it, stoke it, stoke it, stoke it. Get it super, super hot, and then we go, and then we'll get a result. I'm, I'm wired. I'm totally wired. I'm trying to figure out what's going on inside of very hot, very dangerous things. It's nerve-wracking. It sure is bad for the nerves, because at these temperatures, the very structural integrity of the barrel is in jeopardy. That's a glowing barrel. We're good for test number two. Give a countdown, Jamie. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh. Ah! I was hoping that it would actually work, but 
all we have to show for it is a nice warm ball. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd call this myth busted. Without a doubt, we threw everything we could at this, from high-speed injectors to modern materials to the best advice we could get, and we met all of the conditions that we were told to get, including getting the back of that barrel red hot, getting the exact amount of water we should have gotten in, and we didn't get a launch. It's totally busted. We have to build a proper boiler with a valve on it. I'm going to build a small-scale one that I guarantee will actually fire a cannonball just so we have some kind of explosion out of this. Their last cannon relied on water being added and flashing to steam instantly. This time, thanks to a heavy-duty valve, they'll heat the water inside the chamber until the steam pressure is such that when the valve is opened, the results are explosive. With the gas on, the pressure in the tank is building. Right now, we're at about 80, 75, 80 PSI. That's about twice the pressure of a car tire, and more than good enough for a test. I'm gonna go. Okay. Ready? Firing! Firing! Three, two, one. Yeah! I didn't see where that went. I didn't see where it went either. I just heard it go pop. Oh. <laughs> where is it? <laughs> it's <stuck>. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool! That's perfect! Well, full scale, that shouldn't take that long. It's pretty simple. We could knock that out in a couple days. And it'll be dramatic. I mean, we should be able to launch a cannonball pretty far using steam. We have to finish this episode with some kind of explosion or launch that goes poom. That's, that's in my contract. With the team hunkering down for safety, the pressure in the boiler continues to climb. We're at ooh, just over 60 PSI here. I swear, look at how hot that valve was getting. Yeah. I don't want it to fail. I, you're right. I'd My say. vote would be for firing it within the next five minutes. This just has to work. Yeah. If it doesn't work, we're idiots. Now, we may be idiots anyway, and that's fine with me. But I'd rather be idiots with an explosion. 68 PSI, you go for launch. Okay. 68 PSI. Firing in three, two, one. Yeah! Hey! Yeah! Boom! Take <laughs> your eyes off of it! At last, a you know cannon catapulted by steam. It's mission accomplished. But how far did the 24 pound ball actually fly? Yeah! Let's measure out this launch. Dude, I'm so psyched! I feel like really good. <laughs> After scouring the entire grounds, they're about to give up. Until a mile down the runway, Jamie hits pay dirt. Oh, I'll be darned. <laughs> you didn't find it. I did. You did? Dude! <laughs> That was a solid mile. The ball made it a solid mile. But that's it not where it landed. No, no, but still, it might have gone 1,000 feet or so would be my guess. We were only at about 65 PSI, maybe 68. Uh-huh. And we were shooting for 200. We were ready to do that. It just took too long, and so we fired it a little prematurely. Yeah, we might have ended up hitting San Francisco at 200 PSI. So we were able to make a steam cannon, finally. But uh, I think we're agreed. Archimedes and Leonardo could not have. I agree. All right. It's busted. The sun's gone down. Let's go home. Okay.